Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Jen, and today we're here to talk about the books that I've read so far in April, or better yet known as the mid-month wrap-up. So, let's get into it. Alright, so let's talk about the books that I've read so far in April. I think that we can get away with a pretty quick video, and as I'm saying this, I realize that, who am I kidding? Uh... I don't know how to stop this. That being said, I only have four books for you for the first half of April. I know. Um, but I'm okay with that. Secondly, two of these books are pretty big chunkers. Like, pretty big chunkers. And um, I took my time through those. I really only have four books. So let's get into it. The first book that I read for this month, I actually found quite some time ago. I, I found it last year. I'm not quite for sure where I found it, but it's been on my Kindle for a really long time. It is on Kindle Unlimited, by the way. It's called Latte Darling, and it's by S.J. Tilly. This is an age gap romance, and I think that it intrigued me because unlike most age gaps where the heroine typically tends to be pretty young, either in her late teens or her early 20s. However, Maddie is actually 31, and Axel, our hero, is 52. So yes, there is a nice age gap, but I like that our heroine was mature. Like, she's established. And she actually is established. She owns her own business. She actually owns a coffee shop and latte darling. And she's, you know, pretty successful. Axel owns his own business as well. But the kicker here, and what really drew me into wanting to read this story is, so Maddie hasn't dated in quite some time and she's finally putting herself out there for a blind date because she needs a date to her best friend's wedding and when the book starts we find her at a bar waiting for said blind date but in place of her blind date showing up is none other than his father that's right so axel is actually maddie's would-be date father this catted up silver fox of a man that maddie's like there's no way that this man is gonna want me but they do end up hitting it off. Axel is very much that type where he was, like, I know what I want. Um, that's my woman. He's pretty protective of her from the start, um, but not in, like, a cringy way. This is a bit of an insta-love, but ironically, that wasn't cringy for me either. And it's done in a way where it didn't, um, it didn't bother me because there is a bit of a slow burn with these two. Something that definitely caught me by surprise was... Uh, Daddy Axel's dirty mouth, and he definitely knows his way around the bedroom. There is a dual POV, so yes to that. And Maddie is a curvy girl, so there is curvy girl representation, which I love. However, I do need to jump on my soapbox here for just a second because I have been seeing a bit of a pattern in a lot of the books that I've been reading that do have curvy girl representation, and it is a pattern that I feel needs to be tweaked a little bit. And this is it. I love the curvy girl representation. I am here for it. I think it's awesome that authors are doing this because, let's face it, um, social media lies and women have curves. I mean, my body literally changes every day. Hell, if I'm being honest, it probably changes on the hour. So I'm here for that. I love that. We have curves. We have rolls. We have jiggle jiggle. And that is okay. So I am definitely here for this. Here is my problem. Authors. When you have your heroine as a curvy girl and she has an issue with her size, her curves, whatever. She has an issue with her body. It's clear. It's not a one-off thing, but it's something that is brought up multiple times throughout the book. This needs to be addressed. More so, it needs to have some sort of resolution. I'm getting irritated in the fact that we have a heroine who clearly is not comfortable in her own body to the point of she overhears a conversation and her brain literally omits words to make a situation worse. That's, that's a problem to me. When you self-harm, that's a problem. When you put yourself down, that is a problem. And what I don't like is that when it seems that the love of a man or the love of a woman resolves that. It's washed away. He loves me. She loves me. So all my problems are gone. I have no body issues. Listen, I'm a woman. Bullshit. 
and most of these authors are women, so they understand that's bullshit. It doesn't have to be this big to do. It doesn't have to be pages. It doesn't have to be chapters, but have some kind of resolution. What are you doing to work on yourself? Are you going to therapy? Mention it. Are you giving yourself daily affirmations or some shit? Mention it. Something. Have some kind of resolution because you don't go from belittling yourself, constantly aware of what's hanging over or what's jiggling or omitting words out of a conversation to make a situation worse to being completely fine because you found love. And I feel like authors are doing a disservice to themselves. They're doing a disservice to the reader and they're doing a disservice to that character. Again, this is just my opinion, but this is a pattern that I keep seeing where our curvy girls have a problem. And it's not every curvy girl. Some curvy girls love their curves and that's it. There's no issue. I'm only talking about the heroines that actually do have an issue with themselves, who self-harm, who have negative thoughts in issues around their body image is prevalent in the book and it's not discussed it's mentioned so much in the book but nothing ever comes to fruition about it no resolution is made no plans are made and i just feel like that's something that could be addressed because even though we're reading romance and it's all about the romance and this man makes me feel good or this woman makes me feel good or whatever it is that is great but your feelings, your internal thoughts are not going to subside completely because you found love. All right, I'm done with my TED Talk. I apologize for that little rant, but I did have to mention it because it is something that I keep seeing. It's prevalent, and it is something I do feel that needs to be addressed. I did enjoy this book, though. I ended up giving it a 3.5 and a 3 stars for Spice. My next two books I will be putting together because there you go. Yes, I read... Saving Six and Redeeming Six by Chloe Walsh. These are the third and fourth book in the Boys of Toman series. This is Joey and Aoife's story. And these are the reason that we only have four books to talk about today. Because not only are these some chunkers, but when reading Redeeming Six, I did have to take a bit of a break in the middle of this because I just, I needed a breath. So I am just going to hold up one of these books because damn, these things are heavy. Like I said, this is Eva and Joey's story. Joey is Shannon's brother from the first book. I definitely wanted to wait to read both of these until I had both of these in my hand because I knew from reading Binding and Keeping 13 that I was going to want to just roll right into the second one when I finished the first one. And I did kind of hold off until now because I knew that I was going to have to relive moments from particularly keeping 13 if you know you know but something that is really interesting is everything that happens in saving six is actually about five or six years prior from even the start of binding or keeping 13 if that makes sense because johnny and shannon meet when she starts toman in keeping 13 and, and their relationship starts from there and then you get their conclusion in keeping 13. however joey and eva meet when they're 11 and 12. So we get all of their backstory. And then we get to Redeeming Six, which is all the events that happen in Binding and Keeping 13, but all from the point of view of Joey and Eva. This is one thing that I love about Chloe Walsh is, yes, obviously you're getting two completely different points of view because with Binding and Keeping 13, you have Johnny and Shannon's point of view. With this, you have Eva and Joey's point of view. So there are scenes that are overlapping, but you do get them in that other point of view. And it's almost like it's a completely different story. Because I'm going to tell you, Eva wasn't so prevalent in Binding and Keeping 13, but I totally had her pegged as a different character. For me, she seemed reserved and quiet and meek and very different and very contrast from who Joey's character seemed to be from Shannon's point of view. Totally taken back when I started reading these two books and I realized this girl is a spitfire. This girl is badass, and I just, I fell in love with Eva. I fell in love with Joey because again, from Shannon's point of view and a little bit of Johnny's, like you know that he has problems, you know he does, but you don't know 
how deep they are until obviously you get their point of view. But even Shannon, I think, doesn't realize how deep his problems are because Joey does a really great job of taking care of his siblings, sheltering them as much as he can. Obviously, he's not going to shelter them from everything because damn their life. But he takes the brunt of everything. He is the caregiver of this family, and that shows. And Eva's willingness to be there for him, and, and be, I just, I loved it. I feel like we're going to have a repeat of when I reviewed Finding and Keeping 13 here, where I was struggling for what to say. Like, how do you adequately describe these books to make somebody want to read them? And I just have no words. There, there are no words. These books have just done something to me. They, I, I just, I really honestly don't know what to say. Obviously, there is heavy content in the series. If you're somebody that needs to check trigger warnings, please do so. But there is a little bit heavier content in these because Joey does struggle with drug abuse and there are thoughts of suicide so definitely please check that if you need to but but at the same time like don't shy away because of those trigger warnings because what's inside of these books the messages that are there I just think these are books that I would recommend to anybody off the street no matter what you like to read I know that these are hyped up I know that they've gotten even more hype this year alone I'm so glad that I read Binding and Keeping 13 before this year because I definitely think that like the hype wouldn't have scared me away from reading these, but I know a lot of people do shy away from reading super hyped up books because, you know, I've been there, Magnolia Park, the Addicted Calloway series, super hyped up. Not for me. These definitely live up to the hype, but my girl Aoife... She did kind of irritate me a little bit in this one um, to where, listen, this is not a spoiler. It's right here on the cover. Our girl gets pregnant. And she has a little problem with that where she doesn't quite want to believe what's happening to her and hence doesn't tell the father. And I'm like, honey, if we don't tell our man that we're going to have a baby and something happens, I'm not going to be too happy. We need to go ahead and woman up. You a strong girl. I need you to put your big girl panties on and tell somebody he's about to be a dad. So, yeah, I got a little irritated with her. But, again, it did not take away the story from me. I was just like, girlfriend. I mean, I get it. You're still in high school. You got yourself pregnant. We're going to flip out a little bit. Take a couple days and flip out. But then we need to go ahead and tell daddy that he's going to be a daddy. There, I just... There's nothing to say. Read these. If you haven't, read these. Because, quite frankly, um, I need to read all of them again. Because I get so engrossed in them. Um, I want to annotate these. But when I'm reading these, I'm so involved that I want to get that experience. And then go back and annotate later. Five stars. Both of them are five stars. And... It was spicier than I had anticipated because Johnny and Shannon, I was waiting for that. Um, I was, I remember specifically thinking if these two do not get together and do something, please, these two are not like that. These two get freaky and I'm here for it and I liked it. I gave Saving Six a two for spice and I gave Redeeming Six a three for spice and yeah, pick these up, read them. The Boys of Toman, Chloe Walsh for the win. Yes. Last but not least, I read Right Man, Right Time by Megan Quinn. This is her newest release. It came out not too long ago. I'm not quite for sure when, but it, it wasn't very long. So this book, I will not be telling you my thoughts on because I will be reviewing this later. This is actually a buddy read that I did in collaboration with Bestie Book Reviews and Amber Reads Romance here on YouTube and we will be doing a review of that this coming Sunday so if you haven't read it read it if you've read it and want to join us join us 
If you haven't read it and don't want to read it, but just want to hang out with us, come on over. I will leave all that information down below for you as well as Jessica, Mandy, and Amber's channel so that you can go and check them out as well. And I highly recommend that you do so. So that being said, I'm not going to tell you what I thought about the book, but I will give you a little bit of what it's about. This is a sports romance. Specifically, it is a hockey romance. There's an age gap of 10 years. There is fake dating. It is a part of a series, but it is an interconnected series. I believe it is the third book in the series. It follows Silas and Ollie. It is a dual POV, so yes to that. And um, fun little tidbit, Silas has a Jacob's Ladder, so that's quite interesting. So yeah, that's all I really got to say about that. I ended up giving it a 3.75, and I gave it a 3.5 for Spice. So there you have it. Those are the four books that I've read so far in April. As far as the rest of the month, I have really been itching to pick up some Mafia. So I have a couple books in mind for that. However, there are a couple new releases that I kind of want to get to as well. We'll see. I am a mood reader. I will read what I feel like. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already so that you can get more of this. Until next time, happy reading.